Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 21 of our tutorial series on creating a point and click adventure game in Unity. So, in this video, we're going to be making our collector interactable, which is our fourth type of interactable. And now, the basic idea um, of the collector is pretty simple. It's um, very much in line with our other interactables in that all we're doing is if we go into Mono Develop and look at our interactable script, we're taking this interact uh, function and we're going to make it do what we need it to do. In this case, it's just going to be adding an item to our inventory. However, there's obviously, that's a very loaded statement because we don't really have any items or any inventory to work with at this point. So what we need to do is we need to create a um, kind of a helper class along with our collector script. So first off, let's create that script. We'll so C sharp and we'll create a collector. And then secondly, we're going to create a script called item. An item is whatever um, whatever thing you're able to pick up and put into your inventory. I'd love to use the word object, but that's obviously a very loaded term in um, C Sharp. But basically, you know, it could be a key, it could be a piece of a puzzle, it could be a part to a machine you need to fix. It can be, you know, really any any physical object that you can pick that you could pick up could be an item for your inventory. So with these two scripts, we can open them both up in Mono Develop. Double click both of those. And did that open an item? No, it didn't for us. Open this one as well. Okay. So collector, first of all, we're going to make sure that this inherits from interactable. And the other thing we can do here is we can get rid of our start and update functions. And what we need to do is add a public override and then we'll see that interact comes up for us. And instead of doing the base interact, right now we'll just put in a uh, kind of a dummy, dummy line here. We'll say adding item to inventory. Save that. And now right now with this, as always, we could simply um, drop this interactable script onto one of our props and we would find, oh, sorry, not the item, the collector script um, onto one of our props and we would find that we would be able to click and see that we are you know, getting that basic interaction functionality. However, that's obviously not all, we don't just want to debug log, we want to actually you know, kind of take an item from um, the collector and add it to um, this inventory I keep talking about. So. In order to do that, we do need one other thing in our public collector class, which is a public item. And we'll just call that my item that we're be, we'll be able to collect from this particular collector. Um, now there's a couple of ways that we can decide on how we want to um, populate this. But for now, we need to actually create the item class. Now the item class doesn't need to be a mono behavior. We can actually delete that because the item isn't tied to any specific game object in our scene. It's simply this sort of piece of really information that we're going to take from, from a collector script and add to another script that is our inventory. So we can just keep that as that. And we can delete these um, functions because those are really these start and update our mono behavior functions. We don't need them. Uh, we can add a quick variable here. Let's call it public string and we'll call this item name. Now items might have a number of different variables. You know, there could be uh, quantities, there could be maybe it's a specific type of an item or a material. Depending on how deep you want to get with your game, um, you can make your items as complex as you want. For what we're going to do right now, though, we're just going to look at it and say, um, Say we have a string item name, and you know one item's name is um, front door key, and then we're, we can later on have a door that has a prerequisite of you must have the front door key. Um, it's just a very simple way to be able to make sure that the item we are holding is the item that we need. So now that we have our basic item class, how do we track whether or not we are carrying an item? There's there's almost a thought you could do something like a switcher where in our collector we could say, you know, we could try and say something like bool item collected and then set that to true or whatever. But that's going to get very complicated very quickly because we're going to have to check through all of these collectors every time. It would be really better if there was some, 
you know, common place that really represents our player that we could just track these are the items that are being held. And we can do that actually pretty simply um, by using our game manager. Our game manager is a very simple static, um, has a static class, so it's always accessible. We All we have to do is say game manager dot ins, and what we can do is we can create, um, similar to where our current node is, we can create an inventory. We can say something as simple as public item, item held. Now, if this item held is null, we know we're not holding anything. If there, but there, if there is an item there, we know that is the item we are currently holding. We could even go so far as to say something like um, item um, with an array brackets, so that we could have multiple items, and we would, you know, be able to set maybe, you know, you can hold a total of two items, one in each hand, or eight items. You know, you have a backpack that you can store a certain number of items in, things like that. Um, I believe the game The Room, um, the iOS series of games, I think you're able to hold up to five items at any given time. Um, things like that. However, there's also precedent for just only being able to hold one item. Um, Myst was kind of infamous for this. There was always, you could only ever hold one page at a time, so you would have to go through the age twice if you wanted to complete both the blue and the red books. And we'll just stick with um, one item for right now. Um, if you want to expand this to multiple items, it's pretty much just a matter of either creating an array or a list that you're able to add to and subtract from. Um, but that's really the same sort of notion as any other array or list. So it's not something that I feel is you know particularly necessary right now. But basically, the idea here is that once you are um, once you click on a collector that has an item attached to it, it will basically populate into this item held location. We can do that really simply here. If we go into our um, interact script, we'll delete this debug log, and instead what we're going to do is we're going to say game manager dot ins dot item held equals my item. And so what this does now is basically states that um, when we click on this, when we interact, we now are carrying this item. Now it's worth noting that this means that the item is still here too, however, so we'll always be able to get it. And in general, that's a good idea for um, for point and click games to be able to always be able to get that item because you never want to dead end your player. Say they pick up an item and then they you know use it incorrectly somewhere or you know drop it somewhere or pick up another item and suddenly lose the first item. You don't really want it to suddenly be the case that oh they can't complete a puzzle now because they did that. That's a frustrating experience and a bad um, bad player experience. So in general, it's good to make sure that you always have an item accessible. However, you may have situations where like you have to hit a button for the item to reappear or something like that. So it might be worthwhile to, to have a, um, a separate bool here like that's like item present or something like that. So you can track whether or not the item is there at the time. Right now, we're just going to assume that our item is always available to be picked up from the collector. And what just happens is we create a copy of it and it appears here. So maybe it's a jar of jelly beans. You're taking one jelly bean out every time, but there's still plenty of jelly beans in there. That sort of notion. So now if we go to our game, let's take a look at, say, our sphere. And right now our red sphere is an observer. And so we, when we click on it, we're able to observe this um, sphere in a 3D space. Let's get rid of that. We'll remove this component and instead we'll add a collector. So this collector, um, now when we click on this collector, in theory we would take that item and we would put it into our inventory. Unfortunately right now um, we have a little bit of an issue in that we can't see what our item is and we cannot define our item. So that is the first step that we're going to have to um, resolve in order to make this actually a functional collector script for ourselves. And that is what we're going to look at in our next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.